Hello everyone, welcome to another Java for Testers tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about uh, the runtime polymorphism in Java. So runtime polymorphism in Java is also known as a late binding, dynamic binding or method overriding. So in interview, if you are being asked about late binding or dynamic binding or method overriding, runtime polymorphism, they are all same concept. Now, in the previous tutorial, we have also already understood about the method overloading. So the concept in method overloading is basically you have different signature of the method. So same name, same method name, but different signature. When we say different signature, it could be different number of parameters that you are passing in that particular method or the type of parameters is different. Now in the method overriding, the concept of method, method overriding if we think about it practically is because say for example you have a parent class which provides you certain functionality and then in the child class you want to override the that particular functionality because that functionality doesn't fulfill the requirement of your child class and we'll understand this with real example so First, let us understand what are the key rules when we are doing the method overriding. So in the method overloading, we have seen that method name should be same and the argument need to be or parameter need to be either the number of parameter need to be different or the type need to be different. Now, in case of method overriding, the rules are basically that you have to have the same method name. It is, you know, similar to what uh, the method overloading had so method name needs to be same along with that the parameters of the method or need also to be same so basically when we say the method or the signature method signature needs to be exactly same as it is in the parent class now when we talk about runtime polymorphism it is possible only when there is a inheritance so when there is a in is a relationship only then you can do runtime polymorphism or you can do method overloading okay so let's understand this with the real example say i'll take an example of the animal okay so all the animals make noise so animal when i say animal class let me create a class here and in the animal class if i want to have or I can have a method which says make noise right and this make noise method will have let me have a return type here so so this make noise method will provide the functionality or this will be the common functionality that is common across all the animals right so all the animals make noise so I'll implement something within this particular method so in the actual case i'll implement something within you know this particular method so for now let me do an implementation or i'll simply say animal makes noise okay so this is say for example our implementation of this base class which is animal okay now animal there are different types of animal there is you know dog cat horse cow so n number of animals now all those animals or specific animal then I, which I talk about so if I say cat cat is an animal so there is a is a relationship right now because there is a is a relationship let me save this now if there is a class which has the is a relationship with this parent class which which is animal if there is a is a relationship then there is, there is an inheritance possible for the child class so if I say um, cat let me include main method here and in this particular cat class because cat is an animal so I can have the inheritance and I can extend the or I can inherit the properties of my parent class which is animal so to inherit the properties as we have already understood if you haven't gone through my previous tutorial of the inheritance please go through which is in part of this same series so I'll use the keyword extends the parent class in this case animal right and now 
cat is an animal and I have inherited all the properties that are available in animal. So whatever method I have defined in the animal class, in this case just one method make noise, I can now inherit that particular method. So if I have to call that particular method now from the cat class, I can simply create an object of the cat class with the keyword new and I can call that method. So I can say make noise, right? And if I'll run this now, you will see animal makes noise. So this implementation is coming from the parent class. Now cat, this is very specific, right? I mean, a cat is animal, animal make noise, but cat makes a specific sound. It's specific, you know, sound. So when I say make noise in this, you know, case, what I want to do is say cat meows. So I can override this make noise method. So in my child class, I can simply say public void and I will keep the same signature of the method at, as it is in the parent class. So here you can see make noise, there are no parameters. So I'll simply copy that along with and we can paste it here. Now when we say same signature in the child class, now if I'll implement the or have a different implementation because cat meows so I can say cat meows. So in this case, if I'll say C dot make noise. Now because make noise is the method that is available in the child class as well as it is in the parent class, right? So this method with exact same signature when present in the child class and has the implementation is a basically overridden method. Okay, so if I run this program now, you will see cat meows, which is the implementation that is done in the child class. So this is the concept of overriding in Java. Now, similarly, if there is another class, say dog and dog barks. So in the dog class, I can implement or I can have my own implementation in the dog child class of the make noise method and I can say dog barks. Now, what is the advantage of having or having this feature or method overriding in Java? Say for example, you have in this particular case or say you have a base class in which there is a generic functionality that has been already implemented. So in the child class, if you are a good or you, you don't think that you need any extra functionality uh, that is very specific to your particular child class as in this case we have seen that cat for a cat cat makes sound that's okay but cat makes a specific type of sound so there is a specific requirement that cat meows or dog barks so similar is the case if you have a parent class in java and then in the child class you have the specific requirement that are not being fulfilled by the method or the implementation within the method that is defined in your parent class, right? In this case here, whatever is defined. Then in that case, in the child class, you can override that particular method and have your own implementation. And when you will run it, or when you will execute that particular program, if that overridden method is in your child class, that method will be given preference over the method in the parent class while execution. And that is why it is known as a runtime polymorphism, dynamic binding or late binding and method overriding because when you execute the actual program, only then it basically figures out which method to call and execute. Okay, so in this case, you can see that I have overridden this method make noise in this cat class and that is why cat meows has been called okay if this method is not overridden in this particular class let me comment this and i call this make noise then you will see animal makes noise has been executed so this is dynamic binding or runtime polymorphism in java 
So three rules, important rules, when you are doing overriding, method overriding, method must have the same name as it is in the parent class and the parameter needs to be same. Now parameter need, need to be same, let's understand that as well. So I'll just uncomment this. Say for example here, I provide, you know, uh, another parameter, so which accepts basically string, okay? Now this is not overriding because the signature has changed in this child class. So if I run this now, still it will point to the parent class, right? So if I have to override, uh, the signature has to exactly uh, to be exactly same as it is in the parent class. Okay, so now you can see as I've removed the the parameter here and it, this method became same as the parent class, then it has called this child class. So that's the second thing. And the third thing is basically inheritance has to be there in order to do merit uh, to uh, method overriding. So is a relationship is a must or inheritance is must. So that's why we have this child class cat which extends the animal which is the parent class and this is the inheritance that's there so cat is ex uh, cat is basically inheriting all the properties of animal class so that's all about the runtime polymorphism in java or also known as method overriding in java hope you like the tutorial please do share and subscribe and thank you for watching